Hey! Today I'd like to start getting past setup and into more interactive code. Later on, I will be introducing the code that I used to create the demo video the other day, but since that code is basically just a modified version of PCM.C, I would like to talk about PCM.C first. The PCM.C code can be found in the examples section of the ALSA C library reference that we already talked about. Clicking the examples tab displays the examples page, and the examples page includes a list of hyperlinks to all the examples. I will talk more about this code in a second, but I just want to begin by mentioning a few of the best general aspects. First, PCM.C contains a lot of really great C code examples. Second, the structure is very clear and easy to understand. Third, PCM.C is, in a lot of ways, basically like a Rosetta Stone for ALSA. It is also very easy to compile, and, finally, it can also be modified very easily, which is something that we'll talk about in a few minutes. So, let's begin examining PCM.C. I have two areas highlighted. The first is meant as a cautionary note. Basically we're going to need to change this to hashtag include also slash asoundlib.h in order to get it to compile. If I forget to change this and try to compile it, I will get a warning telling me that it needs to be updated to compile. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is in signed int buffer time. The comment includes mention of a ring buffer. On Wikipedia, there's a great article about a circular buffer, which is another name for a ring buffer, and it introduces and explains the related concepts really well. I'm not going to go through the article in this video, but I wanted to mention it, as it's a really helpful reference. The article also includes this great animation that makes it even easier to understand. One of the general aspects I mentioned a minute ago was clear structure, and next, I would like to briefly introduce some of the functions and other structural aspects. PCM.C plays a sine wave and includes its own dedicated generate sine function. In addition to being a great example of how to generate a sine wave in code, the fact that it is isolated in its own dedicated function is really helpful and makes modification much easier. Another great thing about PCM.C is the way they use a dedicated function to set HW params. In the previous examples that we looked at, HW params related settings were done in main. So, like generate sign, having these settings broken out into their own function is really helpful to get a clearer idea of how each part relates to the whole and where conceptual groupings start and end. A minute ago, I mentioned that PCM.C is like a Rosetta Stone for ALSA. One main reason is because many different transfer methods are included, and PCM.C allows the user to examine how each works and to select the desired one when running the program. I'm not going to talk about transfer methods at this point because I am trying to keep these videos shorter and more focused, but I plan to return to this topic in future videos. Another really interesting aspect of PCM.C is the way that user settings are handled in main. This is a really great example of how to set up a program that takes multiple arguments and includes a help option. While all of the previous elements are really interesting, the best aspect of PCM.C, for me, is the way transfer method is handled. We talked about transfer methods a second ago and I mentioned that PCM.C includes several. Basically, the creators of this code have added a struct that holds the different transfer methods. When we run the PCM.C code, which we will do in a minute, there's this handy printf statement that shows us all of the parameters that we've either selected or parameters selected by default. For the transfer method, it's actually accessing the struct and printing settings to the screen. I really like this but it gets even more interesting. The last member of the struct is actually the name of the associated transfer method function, and they've set it up to take arguments and actually pass them to the function. This is really neat. I remember hearing Caleb Curry talk about functions in structs in one of the C tutorials. Finding a really great practical example of how this might be used in PCM.C has been very eye-opening for me. I just wanted to briefly show one of the transfer functions very quickly to try and illustrate how this works and demonstrate how the coders maintain the link between the data coming in and the function it is being sent to. Okay, so next I would just like to try compiling. The compile command is very easy. So we just have gcc pcm.c minus o pcm minus la sound and minus lm to link math because we're using math to create the sine wave. 
The great thing about PCM.C is that we can use commands with it, like the help command to get a list of options and potential settings. Running the program with help will display most of the settings available to us. Next I would like to try actually running it, and I'm just going to leave the default settings. Basically, it will just play a sine wave at 440 Hz. So we were able to run it. The nice thing is that PCM prints out the settings to the console so we can confirm PCM, stream parameters, and selected transfer method. Next I would like to look at the modified code that I created, PCM underscore short dot C. PCM underscore short dot C is available on GitHub and I will include the link in the description. In terms of transfer method, it uses async direct loop. I think there will be more time to explain why in future videos. But for today I just want to say that I removed all the code for the other methods, and PCM underscore short dot C only uses async direct loop. This was actually the code that I used for the demo the other day, and it basically just sends values stored in an array to the generate sign function. Additionally, because of the way the code is set up now, it just creates a very short looping phrase. Examining the code, the first thing I want to point out is that I have added the correct header also slash a soundlib dot h. Static void update frequency is actually where the array that stores the frequency values that get sent to generate sign is. I just have a double frequency array, and, as I said a second ago, it only has six values. It would be possible to put in many more values and create more complex arrangements, but for today's video, I just have six. The code steps through each value in the array and sends it to generate sign. When it reaches the end of the array, the counter gets set back to zero and the phrase repeats. I include a call to update frequency inside static void async direct callback and that acts like a trigger. I have made some other changes too, but this is the main mechanism that makes it go. Now that we have briefly examined the PCM underscore short dot C code, I would like to try compiling and running it. The first thing to point out is that the compile command syntax for PCM short is essentially the same as it was for PCM dot C and I need to make sure to include both LA sound and LM at the end. So I am going to run it, but I just wanted to mention that, due to my screen capture setup and the specs of this computer, while there is normally not any noticeable latency, there might be some during this demo. Okay, let's run it. Great! So at this point we have briefly covered some of the things that we will need to start doing to get more interesting code, and we have a working demo that we can hopefully begin to start enhancing. PCM.C is really great code and I'm sure that it will be at the core of many future projects too. Thank you!